A group of people who say they have been victims of metropolitan police corruption and malpractice have written an open letter calling for the Met Police Commissioner Cressida Dick to be replaced in her role. The group of seven includes Stephen Lawrence's mother, Baroness Lawrence, DJ Paul Gambaccini and Lady Britton, who is the widow of the Conservative Home Secretary Leon Britton. In the letter, they say, our individual experiences are very different, but we have all been victims of the incompetence and malpractice which pervades the leadership of the Metropolitan Police Service. Well, let's talk to Paul Gambaccini now. Uh, thank you very much for talking to us. Um, tell us why you have signed this letter. I have signed this letter because I believe in its contents. It's that simple. Each of us who was present at that five hour meeting that I will never forget, had thought originally, we must be the only people in the world this is happening to because this is so stupid. This is so obviously unjust. But by talking to each other, either on telephone or via email, we came to notice similarities in our experiences. And during the past few years, we have become bound to one another, uh, even though we come from different walks of life and in a couple of cases, different political parties. Uh, we've all found that the leadership of the Metropolitan Police is breathtakingly corrupt and non-honest. Uh, it covers up at all times. It's so shocking that the nation wants to know the full truth of the Stephen Lawrence case, but Cressida Dick will not allow it. The nation now wants to know the full truth in the Daniel Morgan case, and Cressida Dick will not allow it. Well, sorry, Cressida. It's time you started walking the long, lonesome highway. You are, like the emperor of famous fable, naked, because we all know that you've blocked the truth and been very economical with the truth in all of our cases. OK, well, I mean, the Met would certainly push back on, on your statement that they well, cover of up. Of course it would, because you Sorry, are let, with the BBC let, and you always... Please let me finish, Mr Gambaccini. No, 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 no. No, I'm not going to have this. When I was last on your show, you put up on screen a statement from the CPS without telling me that you were going to do some. And I went in the background, because that is my lying noise. Right. Of course, can I, can, can, may I speak? What is the point of interviewing me if you're only going to give them airtime? This is ridiculous. All throughout the witch hunt, the BBC was on the side of the wrongdoers. And this will come out, by the way. Don't think that we are going to go away. We haven't come for the BBC yet because we're doing the Met now. But in the years to come, boy, the truth about the BBC complicity in the witch hunt will be known. You stated that the Metropolitan Police cover up at all times. Cressida Dick wasn't the commissioner when you were initially investigated and you spent a year longer actually waiting for them to realise there were no charges that were going to be brought against you. Why do you want her specifically to stand down? Because I launched my legal case against the Met the day she took office. It was called Paul Gambaccini v. the Commissioner of Metropolis. She was the Commissioner of Metropolis. It took three and a half years for me to win my case. As she and the Met postponed it as long as they could until what they call a court steps agreement, where the only thing left was to go to trial in which Sir Richard Enriquez, author of the Enriquez report into false allegations, said that he would support me. And so the Met gave in at the very last minute. Three and a half years of non-honesty from this woman. I never knew Pinocchio had a sister until Cressida Dick became commissioner. The other people that are involved in uh, signing this letter, Baroness Lawrence, I mentioned, um, the brother of Daniel Morgan, Alistair Morgan, you mentioned, they have their different reasons for not wanting her to continue in this job. Uh, the speculation is that her contract will be extended for a couple of years. But what the Home Office say to us is that the appointment of the Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police Service is a formal process which will be confirmed in the proper way. The Mayor of London and the Metropolitan Police have declined to comment. This is a marker in the sand from you and the other people that you definitely do not want her contract to be extended. Of course we don't. She's a hack. She's an organization hack. Now, I'm sorry to have to say negative things about people. This is not why I went into public life. Uh, I was only ever accused because I was on television and somebody thought, oh, I'll have a shot at him. The point is, uh, the Metropolitan Police, Hogan Howe and Cressida Dick, have obfuscated the truth 
from the people of this country. If Britain is going to be a first division country after Brexit, it must have a first division police service. And at the moment, it's a third rate Stasi. Right. Ask when... Why she blocked my case for three and a half years, if you're so eager to give the police point of view. Sorry, I'm, I'm not eager to give anybody's point of view. My job, as you know, as a journalist, is to reflect the opinions, the statements of people who are not here to defend themselves when they're being criticised in the way that you have criticised oh, this morning. Why didn't that happen with the BBC and Operation Midland when we had uh, Tom Sanders... Uh, uh, pardon me, I'll turn that off. Um, when we had... Um, <laughs> when we had uh, Carl Beach given free reign of the six o'clock news, why uh, was Harvey Proctor being interviewed by James Nochte on the Today program with a BBC newsman on the phone to the Metropolitan Police in the control cubicle? The ultimate violation of Studio Sanctuary, if you ask me. OK, why obviously, you... I've, no, oh, I've no idea if that's true or not. Please don't shout at me. I've no idea if that's true or not, Mr Gambaccini. I've no, reason to, I've no reason to doubt you, but I'm just... Harvey Proctor told me. OK. I'm just saying I've no, I've no idea if that's okay. true or not. Well, that's obviously because, uh, you know, Fran Unsworth has taken life's last leap. And a good thing, too, because she was on the wrong side with the Cliff Richard thing. And, not, I mean, and she here is also not here to defend herself. So I, I'm going to pause well, that. let's go head to head. I will go head to head with Fran Unsworth in any public forum, and I will dissect her like a frog without ether. OK. I'll pass your invitation on to her. Thank you very much for talking to us this morning. Thank you. Uh, Paul Gambaccini. Right, it's coming up to 10 o'clock. We'll bring you the headlines in a moment. Before that, here's the weather from Louise.